he went to Ramallah. Uh, John McCain, you recall, couldn't be bothered uh, to visit with uh, the Palestinian leadership. He had a very meaningful and substantive discussion with the Palestinian leadership. I was privileged to be there. Um, and it was a, a meeting that covered a, a full range of, uh, of important political issues. And uh, indeed, uh, President Abbas surprised us in the middle of the meeting by bringing in uh, what he called uh, Obama bread, which was a dish that was being sold uh, out in the streets, um, a circular O-shaped bread with, uh, with cheese and, and tomatoes and, and uh, mm -hmm. basil on top as a way of sort of showing that there was uh, a, a real connection that, that the Palestinian people uh, felt to uh, Senator Obama and his trip. And Senator Obama's schedule, as I can attest because I was with him every hour of that day, was chock-a-block. It was absolutely punishing, beginning at the crack of dawn and ending at night. And had we had more flexibility in that schedule, um, certainly uh, his preference would have been to have uh, done as he did when he went to Ramallah in 2006, which is sit down with some young people and students, uh, spend time in the West Bank. Um, he's done that in the past, and he would have loved to have done that before. We just didn't have the opportunity this time. Let me time. get you in a conversation out there. If you want to give us a call from overseas, it's 001-202-842-5056. If you're calling here in the U.S., it's 1-800-528-2090. Um, he made note in one of his comments about, while he was there, about the problems on both sides. I think, actually think it was in his comments in Jordan, at the press conference he did in Jordan, where he talked about the weaknesses of both leaderships um, and the difficulties of moving forward when both sides are so divided as, as they currently are. Well, if they were divided when he was there, the situation has even become worse since he, he left. Um, the next no relationship, by the way. None <laughs> whatsoever. These were all developments that were in the offing long yes. before. But the problem is that the next president, whoever that may be, uh, inherits a very complicated situation. Uh, an, an Israel deeply divided, uh, without leadership strong enough to move, and a Palestinian society physically divided, and its leadership divided, um, again, without the ability to lead, to, to lead and move forward, he has made the point of strengthening leadership. How do you strengthen leadership under these terms? Well, Jim, I think, first of all, uh, one has to recognize that it is what it is. Uh, but one also has to recognize uh, what was very clear throughout our discussions, that from the Israelis' perspective, from the Palestinians' perspective, and indeed from the United States' perspective, we all have a shared interest in a uh, lasting peace uh, negotiated so that uh, a Jewish state of Israel and a viable Palestinian state can live side by side in peace and security. There was no disagreement about that. Everybody shared the view that this is where we need to go. So the question is at whether the, the, the respective political constraints uh, on both sides will complicate that to the point of making it impossible in the near term. Senator Obama's view, Jim, is we don't have the luxury of sitting back and speculating uh, or thinking that you know it's difficult so it's not worth trying. His view is we can and we must try. Uh, we must be engaged constructively from the very beginning of a new administration. He will do that. He will personally engage. Uh, and he won't try to turn back the clock uh, or reinvent the wheel. He'll pick up where the parties leave off. And where they leave off may be not as far along as they might have been if the political circumstances in both sides were more uh, simple. Um, but this is something that, that is important to all concerned. And when our interests are at stake and uh, the interests of, of Israel and, and the Palestinian people, we must and we will make the effort. Let's go to Montana for a call, caller. Hello? Hello? Yes, your question. Hi, yes. Hi, Jim. Hi, Susan. Hi. Um, yeah, I wouldn't worry about McCain if I were you. He's, um, he's putting himself, he's a real twit. He's putting himself in a, a bucket on his own, so don't worry about him. That's uh, an expression I haven't heard before, but I will let it go. Just uh, your question, please. Yeah, um, I wanted to say uh, I do intend to vote for um, uh, Senator Obama, but I was disappointed that he didn't make more of an effort to go to Gaza 
um, which is the real battle zone in that area. Mm -hmm. And I know the people of Gaza would have been, been desperate to see him. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you for the call. Well, Jim, I, I frankly uh, appreciate the caller and, and her support for Senator Obama. I think as a practical matter with Hamas controlling Gaza, it would have been very difficult, both from a political vantage point and from a security vantage point, uh, for Senator Obama to go. Uh, his view is that uh, we should not engage Hamas unless and until it recognizes Israel renounces terrorism and abides by the commitments that the Palestinian uh, leadership uh, committed to some years ago. So that would not have been uh, a move that we contemplated. Um, we were pleased to, to go to the West Bank. Um, we had very productive meetings. And as I said, uh, uh, we all wish that we had had more time uh, to be out and about in the West Bank and indeed to do as Senator Obama as you were did driving in 2006. There, as you were driving there uh, from Jerusalem to Ramallah, um, you saw the wall and you saw the settlements, and you saw the, the, what daily life Palestinians have to deal with, the checkpoint, etc. cetera. It's, 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 it's a problematic environment. Gaza is worse. West Bank is pretty bad. It's, it's no doubt, Jim, uh, a, a very uh, moving and compelling uh, experience uh, to take that drive. Okay. Um, as you know, I... Uh, um, I've been, I've been there before. Uh, I've also spent a lot of time in Africa, and I'm familiar with the circumstances where, uh, where people are, are living uh, with challenging environments. Let's go to uh, um, uh, Maryland for a call. Uh, hello, Mr. Rice. I, I'd just like to know, um, what do you think? Uh, I've, over the, through the news programs, I've been hearing that uh, Obama feels that he, or people feel as if Obama thinks he's an elitist or whatever, where McCain uh, went to uh, the Naval Academy through the Legacy Program. He didn't have the grades to get into the Naval Academy. He graduated at the bottom of his class at the Naval Academy, and then he, uh, you know, uh, uh, look at what, what the Senate did give me a, give me a question. Well, uh, I, you know, do you believe... Um, McCain would be more elite uh, uh, okay. than, than Mr. Obama. Thank you. Well, uh, Jim and, and our caller, I, I think <coughs> it's, it's rather laughable to suggest that the half-white, half-black scholarship kid who worked his way uh, from very little uh, up to uh, law school at Harvard is the elitist. Uh, this is a man who took his, his first meaningful job out of uh, university and went and worked for $12,000 a year uh, on the south side of Chicago trying to help workers who lost their jobs find a future. Uh, this is not elitism. Uh, this is the American dream, and it's giving back to your country and your community. Now, John McCain has done that, and we honor his service to our country. But to suggest that Barack Obama, who has also served his country every year of his life, is somehow uh, an elitist and not a regular American, I think is a, a false uh, and typically negative attack. And I think the American people can see well beyond that. Let's go to California for a call. Caller? Hello? E we're not getting the call. I want to talk about the convention. It's coming up in a in little little more than a week. Um, what are the expectations and what are the concerns, if any, that you have for the event? Well, I think the expectation is it will be an opportunity uh, for the American people to hear from and, and see again not only Barack Obama as he talks about the challenges that America faces and the kinds of change in leadership that we need, but it's also an opportunity for them to see the new face of a Democratic Party. Um, we're going to showcase uh, some governors and senators and leaders um, that really represent uh, uh, a new future for the Democratic Party, a party that's about getting things done, uh, that is solution-oriented, that's about unity and, and, and bipartisan solutions. And I'm very excited about it. I, th I think this is uh, it's going to be a great convention, and we're going to come out of it more unified than ever uh, and ready to beat John McCain in the fall. And the vice president's going to be? I have no idea. Thank you for joining us. When we come back, we'll get an analysis of the situation in depth 
uh, with Charles Kupchin. He'll talk about Russia and Georgia and take your questions. Stay tuned.